Hi, Adrienne from Happy Hour Projects here, and you guys may already know this, but I love metal stamping. With Mother's Day coming up, it's just right around the corner here, one of the things I want to show you is the part of the reason why a lot of us got into jewelry making in the first place, the mommy necklace. Let's go take a look. Alright, we're just going to jump right in here. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the supplies. First of all, um, you've got your basic stamps. Um, I'm just using the basic ones today because um, this, the, economy set, the economy set is like probably what I recommend for people most often to buy because it is inexpensive. It's going to be really versatile. Now it is very basic also. So if you really have your eye on a fun font, feel free to spend the money on that. Um, it's this, but getting the, the economy font. Um, just like a real basic sans serif font, is a good investment to see if you like stamping. So that's what I would suggest, but really do whatever you like. What I will say is, if you're going to invest the money, get a 3mm set. That's probably the most versatile size that I use. You are going to need a bench block. This is your hard surface to stamp on. You won't be able to stamp on, really, it, it, you're not going to get a good impression if you're not stamping on something hard. I really like my bench block because it's got a rubber um, bottom, rubber base, and that absorbs a lot of the noise because hammering on metal, as you <laughs> can probably imagine, gets really loud. Now, speaking of hammers, um, you'll, you'll notice I've got a special stamping hammer. Once you know that stamping is something that you want to do, you absolutely want this hammer. Uh, the shorter handle gives you a lot, um, a lot more control when you're stamping. And I will say too, <laughs> when I switch to the smaller hammer, uh, you can use the regular one in your toolbox. That actually will work fine. But when I wasn't so worried that I was going to hit my left hand, my stamping got like leaps and bounds better. Um, one of the things I recommend starting out with is the nylon hammer. I'll talk about that a little bit more once we get started. This is for flattening. This won't mar the surface of anything that you're working on. This is a good tool to have. Depending on what kind of projects you want to do at first, you may or may not want to do this. Um, if you aren't flattening out your things with your nylon hammer, what you'll probably want instead is a dapping block or a doming block, depending on you know where you're buying it from. They call them two different things. And mine is made of wood. I'm planning on investing in a, in a more heavy duty one because I do use it all the time. You can tell mine's all scratched up. But um, this is if you want to kind of cup or dome your pieces. This is what I use and this is what we're going to use today. I'll show you. These are the punches that go with it. Um, the only other things you really need, I use a Sharpie for darkening my letters. Uh, some people use acrylic paint. That's totally fine too. But you will want a polishing cloth uh, to take the darkness away. And the only other thing I will, well, I guess I've got two other things. Um, if you're not buying, if you're not using pre-punched blanks, you're going to need a hole punch. Um, I buy mostly not pre-punched blanks, so I use my hole punch all the time. And the only other thing I'm going to say that we need today is stamp straight tape or masking tape. I just have basic masking tape I'm still working on. Um, you'll want this to help mark where you're going to stamp your letters. So let's just dive right in. We'll get started here. You want to, first of all, find the center of your blank, and you want to go just below that so that you're stamping across the widest part. You don't want your tape to be exactly on the widest part because then your letters are going to look too high. What I then do, I usually take a pencil, and I just mark off exactly where I plan to stamp my letters. I've got five letters in my son's name, so I marked off my five positions here. Now some people will start in the middle and work their way outward. I just start right at the beginning. Hold your stamp as flat as you can. Uh, what I've done is you just gently, gently drag it across the top. Now you don't want to scratch your blank at all, but you gently drag it across the top and pull it down towards your tape and when you feel the edge of that tape, that's where you want to stop. You want to hold it as firmly as you can. You want to make sure <laughs> that your letter is the correct side up. I've uh, had plenty of practice with this, and believe me, I've stamped letters upside down. It's awfully fr frustrating to get part, part of the way through a project and find you've stamped something upside down. You just want to give it one nice firm tap. You don't want to hit it more than once because that's when you start getting double impressions. So we just want to hit it one time. And I've got a nice clean R there. And I'm going to switch to my lowercase font. And same thing, I just, I'm pulling it gently toward that line. 
lining it up with where I've marked, and one firm hammer strike. Now, some letters you're going to need to hit harder than others. The M is one of them. Because there's more surface area to the M, it has to displace more metal, so you might need to hit a little bit harder with it than you would, say, um, an I or an L or a T. You don't have to move as much metal with those. And I've got my name stamped here. This is my son's name, Roman. Now, if you are um, planning on just leaving it as is, what I would like usually what I would recommend is to turn it over backwards and to tape back over it. And you want to take your nylon hammer and just flatten it out all the way. That's in case it has cupped at all. If you're using a thinner gauge of metal, you're definitely going to need to do that. Now um, I'm using a thicker gauge aluminum for this, so it didn't it didn't um, it didn't bend much, which is a good thing. So what I do next, well you know what? Here's what we're gonna do before I say. I think I'm gonna show you. Sorry, I'm not used to doing this for the camera. I'm used to working on my own here. I'm just gonna show you. Which one do I want here? I guess I'm gonna go with this one. All right. To dome your letters. See, and I'm, I'm all thrown off here. You gotta forgive me. We're gonna punch a hole is what we're gonna do next. Not used to doing this with an audience, you gotta forgive me. All right, so with these screw down punches, you can either mark where you want, or I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty used to exactly where the, the center is for things like this. You just screw it down. Once you've got it positioned right, you just crank the screw, and it pops a hole right in your blank. And unscrew it and pull it right off you've got a hole right there at the top now I'm going to dome it so I'm going to pop it right here into the damping block and you've got two punches you've got uh, one for more um, I guess more open cupping and this one does does finer if you're going to go with a deeper cup you want to use this this other small one but I usually start with a big one and see how far I get there and all you need to do is you just want to tap on the end of this. And this, you can do several taps. You want to move, move your punch as you go here, so that you're getting all these spaces evenly. What you don't want is for it to only be domed in one particular area. I use this it got popped all the way down in there and it's got a little bit of gook on it just because these I've used them over and over and over again so what you'll see is this gives it a nice rounded look now what we're gonna do next is I'm just gonna use my sharpie to darken in these letters you want to make sure you're getting all the way down into those crevices and the only reason I didn't do this first is because I don't really like getting marker on my punches if I can avoid it. And I've done it a fair share of times. But you want to get all the way down into those crevices. And you want to take your polishing cloth and then just buff it right out. What this is going to do is all the raised parts, it's going to take the marker right off of that. You can see it's already coming off. And it's going to leave the, the darkening just in the impressions here. So it would be the same if you're using um, acrylic paint or if you're using Sharpie marker. It's just a matter of preference. Now if you're using a nicer metal, if you're using like silver for example, a lot of people will actually um, put an actual patina on their metals. They'll age them with liver of sulfur and then buff them out. But I think that's stinky for one. 
and I think this works really well. Now I'm using aluminum today. You actually cannot oxidize aluminum at all, so it wouldn't work for this anyway. So I just use Sharpie most of the time. You can see that polished up real nice. Now I was just going to skip ahead and uh, do the one for my daughter on its own, but her name is Rhea. She's got a Y in her name, and there is one really important point that I want to show you um, for when I do my stamping. What to do when you have these letters that hang below the stamp line. Remember I said you can use this line to line your letters up? Well, sometimes you've got letters that hang below. They've got the descenders, your, uh, your P, your Y, G, all of those letters. You're going to have an issue with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip over. It's R-A-Y-A -A is how you spell her name. That's why I'm just going to quick get these stamped. So I've skipped over the Y for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my tape right off. And I'm going to line this up at the top of my letters now. And we're going to do this exactly the same way as doing it underneath, except for now we're going to come up from the bottom, slide it up from the bottom, and stop when you hit the, that line with the top of your stamp. I don't know how well you can tell without me darkening this. We may have to wait, we may have to wait until it's darkened. You can see that that all just lined up just fine. All right. All right, now stamping is one thing, but um, I wouldn't feel like this is a really good um, necklace tutorial if I didn't also show you how to assemble the jewelry, and that includes making the charms. So you can certainly buy pre-made charms, and that would be um, a step you can skip here, but I am going to show you how to make one yourself. First of all, you're going to need an 18-inch chain. Um, you can actually, it can be a 16-inch chain, it can really be whatever whatever your preference is. You know, it's, it's up to the mom in this case. But what I've done is I've taken the end jump ring off just to make it easier for stringing. And we've got our rounded charms, our dome charms that we made. And I've got some jump rings. Now I've already opened these up. You want to make sure you open your jump rings by twisting them. I already opened them just to make it a little bit faster for video here. I've got one assembled charm here already. And I'm going to show you how to make a second one. Now you can use pearls, you can use crystals, you can use whatever you like. What I use is a two inch head pin, jewelry head pin, and I just um, add that bead right to it. Using a pair of round nose pliers, you just grip it, and I usually go, this is a four inch bicone, um, chub, a four inch bicone bead here, and what you need to do, I just tilt it to one side, I wrap the end around the round nose pliers here, and this is going to make a loop. So here we go, we've got a loop, and then this end of the wire, just wrap that around that kind of neck that we made. Just a couple of wraps is fine, really one is enough to secure it, but you know, you want to have that nice clean look where, it look where it's filled in that whole gap that you left. And take your uh, wire cutters here. I'm going to turn it over so I can get to them better. And just nip that end off. If you've got a little bit of a rough end there, you can either file it or I just use my regular jewelry pliers and just tighten that down. And then you've got a little charm. So what you want to do is add a jump ring to that. And close around up with the pliers here. Okay, so there we go. So, we want to add jump rings to our discs as well, so that we can string those. And we always want to be twisting our jump rings to open and close those. If you pull them open, they're a lot harder to get closed again. But by twisting them, you can just twist them shut again. And my hands are plenty dirty from handling my metal stamps, so I'm getting fingerprints all over these, but that's fine because we can still shine them up once we're finished here. We can still polish it. It's the beauty of metal is it can always be polished and improved. 
but what we want to do now is actually string the necklace. So I'm going to give you a, hint, a tip here and I'm going to tell you most people are right handed. Now if you don't know if your recipient is right handed or left handed I would make this, I would make this into a right handed necklace. But most people are. So what you want to do is with the clasp in your left hand and then the open part in your right hand, that's how you want to string these on here with these charms facing you. And I'm just adding them on here. Now as this um, particular necklace is worn, these uh, charms will go in different orders. So sometimes one will be on top, sometimes the other one will be on top. You just, uh, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll change places different times here. So we've got that. Add on my pearl here. My green charm. All right, so we've got all those added on. I use a jump ring here to close this off. First of all, this is going to make sure that your charms don't fall off the end. So that's helpful in itself right there. Of course, I've got the camera on, so I cannot get this thing through. There we go. And just close her on up there. Now, because we did this opposite while they were facing us, when the wearer goes to put it on, they will be facing out instead of facing their chest if they use the clasp in their right hand, because most people are right-handed, like I said. So there we go. And now you have yourself a fully made mommy necklace.